And we are different in the Washington region than the rest of the country in many respects because if there's a tremendous budget cutting in the federal government, well, that would specifically hurt Northern Virginia, which has become, become the headquarters of federal spending, military and uh, consultant spending. Uh, what? How do you protect your own congressional district if you're going to be cutting the budget, Mr. Fimian? I think I asked you this when you were here well, a look, few months ago. Um, we, it's against they, your own interests. Um, Government can operate more efficiently, and we got to engage the federal worker to do that. Um, I'm worried about my country. My country's in trouble because we're overspending at a hyper rate. Mr. Connolly says that <clears throat> we got to stimulate demand. You're not going to stimulate demand. What you've got to do is reduce uncertainty. He talks about the Clinton and, and what Clinton and Bush did. Look, what matters is what he did. He voted for $3 trillion in new spending. He voted for $670 billion in new taxes. He voted to increase the, the, the debt, the deficit, to 40% of the federal budget. It's the same as you and I running out of money in our household on the 20th of the month and using a credit card and going out every night for the remainder of the month to the most expensive but, steakhouse what, in town. What, what, but, but, we, but, um, but on the concern that if, if the government does cut back, and may, I'm not saying it should or should not, I'm just saying won't that affect the economy of Northern Virginia? Are you worried about that at all? And now, let, me make, let me make it even more specific because everybody who's listening... not more complicated because I made a very simple both. question. <laughs> everybody who's listening to this broadcast knows that one of the largest employers in your district is the federal government. There's a conversation taking place right now about whether federal workers are paid too much. Even the president has engaged on this issue. Where do you stand on salary levels for federal employees, and what issues do you plan to advocate for federal workers in the next session of Look, Congress? I would engage the federal worker. They are an immensely talented group of people. They know their job very, very well. Their bosses, 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 boss, political appointee doesn't, but they do. And in the private sector, what gets incented gets done. Kojo, what I would do is I would incent these people to find efficiencies in government and reward them for doing so. Give them 5 or 10% of the savings they come up with. In my company, if, somebody, if we have 20 people in a department and one leaves, we ask the other 19, you can replace or not. If you don't replace, we'll split the savings with you for one year. Year two, the company gets 75%, you get 25%. We hardly ever replace as a consequence of that. If there's 1,000 people in a federal department and 40 leave one year, why not say to the other 960, if you do not replace these jobs, we're going to split 20 of those salaries among you. If you do that five years in a row, you watch what happens. What gets incented gets done. And the reason that's so visible in the private sector is that margins are so thin. Some of, some of your fellow Republicans have pushed efforts to freeze or cut the federal workforce and its compensation. Do you agree? No, I don't. I don't think you have to. I, um, think, I think you do what I say well, and you can have well, your cake before and you ask another question. I would call on Congressman Connolly to answer the question about uh, the – the danger for Northern Virginia, your congressional district. The yeah, I, congressional I, I think my I think my opponent actually represents a real and, and, and present danger to the economy in Northern Virginia with his partisan national partisan talking points about federal spending. Not all spending is the same. Uh, the partnership that has taken 30 years to build uh, between the federal government and the private sector in Northern Virginia has created the second largest information technology community in the United States. Uh, next only to the Silicon Valley. It has absolutely created our quality of life and our economy. I represent the highest median household income in the United States, number one out of 435 congressional districts, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of jobs. Kojo, not only direct federal employment, but federal contractors, indirect federal employment and related employment. And so you have to tread carefully on this relationship. It has, a, I think it's been a win-win for the federal government. And to simply come in with a meat act saying, I just want to slash federal spending is going to have a lot of collateral damage, especially in Northern Virginia. I think you have to do it with a scalpel. I think you have to do it carefully. And I think you have to protect what we work so hard to build in Northern Virginia. I come from that community. Uh, I've, I'm on the relevant committee uh, that advocates uh, for uh, federal employees and for uh, a reasonable approach to federal contracting. Uh, and my opponent has yet to ever Coach, address I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of cutting with the meat axe, but let me tell you, what threatens the Northern Virginia economy the most is the overspending Mr. Connolly is engaged in, period. You can't borrow 40% of your operating budget which is what we're doing. That cannot be sustained. This affects everything. People are going to be looking for cuts everywhere because of the incredible spending Mr. Connolly has added to the federal budget I, in I the would, short time he's been in I office. I would only point out that my opponent yet again has failed to answer the question you put to him. What about the economy of Northern Virginia? Look, just if you become the, the, elected, Keith Femin, would you also join the House Oversight and Government Reform 
subcommittee on the federal workforce? I would like to. My, my predecessor, Tom Davis, sat on that committee and chaired it. Um, but, uh, again, the spending is a, is a real threat to everyone, Kojo. And Mr. Connolly is making light of it as though somehow no. what he's voted for doesn't matter. No. I mean, what he has done is unconscionable, quite frankly. There's in a $30,000 debt on every child born today. In case.